Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Art of MMA. I'm your host, Mike Ginn. That is the mechanic, Brandon Catino. Uh, of course, we'll be giving you our thoughts on Bellator 276 and UFC Vegas 50, but today's show, we're going to be talking about Kevin Holland. Once again, he's pulling out his crime fighter uh, routine and uh, saving the day. We'll talk about uh, Kayla Harrison's latest comments on Cyborg and Amanda Nunez, and then we'll uh, take a look at Henry Cejudo. You know, we've been kind of like going a little bit here and there about, you know, him throwing his name in the hat for fights. Will it ever happen? Is Henry going to unretire or will you see him back in the cage anytime soon? Will Dana let it? So we'll talk about that before making our picks for UFC London. Uh, finally, we have a non-pay-per-view card outside of Las Vegas. They got London this week. Uh, then they're going to Oklahoma. So hopefully UFC is back on the road full time now. Uh, but we'll talk about all that. Of course, check out fightersfirst.shop. Uh, got the brand new vintage 22 collection you can see the shirt on the description below uh we're going to be featuring uh, a lot more vintage retro stuff in the shop uh you got a brand new mechanic shirt brand new art of mma shirt uh today we just unleashed the bulldog shirt we're going to be doing one for each bulldog as well as uh boxer justin rolf and all the shirts uh, all the uh shows as well so a lot more of that vintage 22 collection kind of rolling out as the spring goes on uh so this might be the last time you see me rocking the uh logo tee for a while uh because i'm waiting on my delivery any day now so i'll be rocking the new vintage 22 shirt as well uh we'll have to get brandon a copy of his new one as well which is pretty dope so check all that out fightersfirst.shop hit the link uh below and make sure you subscribe and leave a comment on this episode brandon how you doing today buddy good man ready to talk some uh mamas with you you know some mma talk to you about how i dominated uh you know the picks last week and going five and one should have been six and i sh- I I'm I'm done I'm done picking Jillian Robertson. She's been letting me down lately. I knew, <laughs> I, knew that, I, I, I knew I should I should not have picked her, but she got me still in in the in the heart over here, and I just need to stop picking also 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 against JJ Aldridge. Every time I pick against her, she she always gets W's. I need to stop down with her. Homegirl got some skills. I just I'm like yeah, but hey, I went five and one. I know I did better than you. But I, somehow, went three, I, went, I went three, two, and one. My my fight pick got canceled again. <laughs> the Yamauchi, uh, Derek Anderson fight, which I was really looking forward to. Um, something happened with Derek Anderson, so they're either going to move it back a couple months or get Yamauchi a different opponent. Um, I've only heard Yamauchi's side of it. He hasn't disclosed what happened to Derek Anderson. Neither has Bellator. Uh, they just said the fight was off right now. Yeah. So I, I, we'll we'll figure it out as, as the details come. I was three, two, and one. It wasn't too bad. You did pass me in the wins column. But I still have you on percentage points because I have four fights so far that just have not happened. So I only have like nine losses and you got 12. So you're closer to 500 than I am. Uh, but we'll see what happens this week. We only got one fight card to take a look at uh, later on with UFC London. Uh, what did you think would happen with uh, Bellator and UFC last weekend? We had some good fights. Yeah, no, man. Uh, it was good fights. I mean, especially on that Bellator card, uh, Cody Law, man, looking good. He actually picked when it is that he was going to win. I can't know, believe that guy keeps getting stuck on the three limbs. He needs to be on the main card. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Hey, he's still, he's still early in his career, you know? So, Hey, you still put him in the prelims, you know, maybe like I say, maybe, 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 maybe his next fight, he will be, he will be on the main card or he could be the main event of the prelims, you know, but not, nah, he was good. You know, Phil Davis doing, doing Phil Davis things as usual and I then knew and, that was going to happen. Yeah, and then and then and then in the main event, man, it was a, it was a banger of a main event. Uh, man, uh, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt had had those body shots to to Boric, uh, but Boric said he still he, he still he still kind of controlled the fight going backwards and everything like that. But hey, man, it was a banger of a fight. I really enjoyed I it. I still don't um, know how that one judge scored at fifty forty five. I thought Boric won too, but I just yeah. didn't see fifty forty five. I thought Burnell won one or two rounds, especially early on. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, fifty forty five. I, I, I didn't, I didn't see that either. But hey, man, it was either way. It was still, it was still, still an entertaining fight. The right guy won. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see what's next for him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He could he might could, be, it might be the winner of that Pitbull uh, uh, AJ fight coming up next month. Exactly. That's that's what I was about to say, man. He, he could be, he could, he could be next. And uh, and yeah, man. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows where Phil Davis is gonna be? Maybe depending on uh, what happens with the uh, Corey Anderson. A uh, Nimkov fight. If Corey Anderson maybe wins, then maybe then maybe Phil Davis, uh, you know, he can get a title shot. But if Nimkov wins, uh, he might he might have to wait a while still, you know, because like I said, you already fought him two times. You already lost to him. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, they were both close fights, but you know, he might he, he might have to wait a while. Yeah, I think Borch either is going to get that winner or he has to like maybe go through Pico um, to get that winner shot. We'll see. Um, be kind of interesting how they play that out because Pico's been hot lately too. And then JJ Wilson lost on the card. He lost a uh, uh, Robata. Robata uh, <laughs> he lost to Gatsi. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to butcher the names this early in the in the show. Uh, your girl. Uh, go ahead, say her name. Your fight pick, Diana. Oh. Uh, I don't. I don't remember the last name. I. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even looking at I, anything. I wanted. To, I wanted to hear you say of Saragoga. Of Saragoga. Anyway, uh, she got the win. And Cody Law's now in the top ten. So if he doesn't get at least um, more prestige on the fight card, I don't know what else would get him there because he's knocked out everybody he's fought. Like he's just yeah. rolling through everybody. Over in the UFC, though, um, you, you both of us kind of knew Ankalaev was going to kind of outpoint uh, Santos. I thought he might even finish him early. Uh, the way Santos has been fighting, but you know Santos is always super tough. What'd you think of that fight? Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, not not too exciting. I mean, I kind of want to think Ankalov maybe maybe did a safe fight, you know. But but after but, but after you hear his post fight, you kind of under, you kind of understand because, like I said, he wanted he wanted to go five rounds. He wanted to prove to himself that he could go five rounds, yeah. especially if you want to be a champion. You know, you got you got to be able to go five rounds. So he wanted to prove to himself. Like I said, both these guys are counter fighters. So I'm saying, what do you think is gonna happen when you got when you got two counter fighters? You know, nobody's really going to uh, initiate the action. But man, he was accurate on all his shots. You know, he was just on one shots, but he would he would he was accurate. You know, so I mean that that was a good fight. I mean, who knows what could be next for him? Uh, Santos, hey man, I, he might. You know, we we got we got we, we got to see what's next for him. I think he's you know he he's definitely he's definitely lost a couple. I mean, he did did get that Johnny Walker fight, but. You know, we'll, we'll we'll have to see what, what what's next for him. I mean, he could he could maybe get a uh, a Dom Reyes fight. You know, yeah, I just don't see any more top five fights for him. I think like maybe top ten. I I just don't see any more top five, at least unless he strings like a few wins in a row together. But he's getting older too. I think he's like thirty six. Like he, he's gonna have to make a run now, or it's it's pretty much done. Who knows if he if he ever recovered from those knee injuries? Yeah, because he's never been the same fighter since. Um. Yeah. Over in the co-main song, knock Marais out, which we kind of knew might happen. Uh, it's unfortunate. Marlon Marais was like one of the most exciting fighters, especially coming over from World Series of Fighting. And now he's like, I think he's been knocked out like three straight times. Even his teammates are calling like, or his friends are saying like, maybe it's time to step away. So when you have friends kind of saying that, it's kind of like, hmm. But he's another dude like Frankie Edgar too. Like uh, those guys that have been on the vicious end of some knockouts, but you, you know they can still fight, but they just don't have the chin anymore. And Marias has always been in a one of those guys that's like, you know, le led with his chin, right? He's always been in these shootout type fights, so you can only do that so long. I was wrong about the Roundtree Robertson fight, but I told you, man, I made my pick. I might be wrong. Yeah. I was like one, one of the guys is getting knocked out. I don't know which one, and I took like the younger, hotter fighter, but Roundtree proved he's still the dude. Yeah, you know? man, Roundtree, man, violent, vi violent Roundtree is a dangerous Roundtree, man, and he definitely brought the violence. You know, with those body shots on the ground, you know, with the with the knees from you know from the side mount. Uh saying he definitely killed it, man. The Drew Dober, Terrence McKinney, that 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 could have been round a round of the night, aka also fight of the night as well. I mean, good good time comeback from uh from uh Drew Dober. Uh my other lady fight, Miranda Maverick, man, you know, she hopped back in there, man. She looked good, uh, you know, dominating. That surprised me. I didn't yeah. think she was gonna beat Mazo. That surprised me. And then, and then of course, Alex Pereira, man, still, still doing his thing. He got, he got his hand raised. You know, more experience. Uh, I would say, is that, is that a good test for him to go the three rounds with somebody like Bruno Silva? Get a little bit of a challenge in there. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, more experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, he did, he did get taken down, but, but he did get back up. He did, he did, he did stuff some takedowns. You gotta remember his, his style of kickboxing, Izzy style of kickboxing, two different styles. Saying Alex Perez's style is kind of still more towards kickboxing, while Izzy's more in and out movement is kind of more more better for for MMA. So that's why, like sometimes people like 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 people like people are trying are trying to compare the two. But you got to remember different styles, you know. So so you, so you got so you kind of got to see how it is that they're going to go. I mean, plus if you look if you look at Alex Pereira and you look and you look at the matches in the top ten, there's probably two fights in the top ten that I would maybe that I would maybe tell him to uh to uh to uh, stay away from everybody else. I wouldn't mind seeing it because mo because most of the people in the 185 are stand up guys. Yeah, or think they are. 
Yeah. Like you have like a Jack Hermanson who probably should take you down, but he wants to stand and bang with like Izzy. Like, yep. Same that really thing, wasn't like, the smartest thing. Like, yep. there's a lot of people that try to cowboy up and try to like beat somebody else at their game. Same thing. Same thing. Like a a a a, a, a Kelvin Gaslam as well. You know, he's a wrestler too, but but he likes to, he likes to try to stand with you as well. So I'm saying, man, I kind I I would like I would like Alex Pereira there. Alex, uh, uh, was it Alex Perry versus Uriah Hall? You know, I'd like mean, to see that. You know, Jerry Candonier, another stand-up guy. You know, like, like, like even a, even a re, even a returning Chris Weidman. Because Chris yeah, Weidman's like, like, close like, to coming back. Like, like, like I said, the only person who I probably would really want him to stay away from would, would be would be Derek Brunson, who I, who I definitely know is a wrestler, and then maybe a Jack Hermanson, like you said. You know, if he get to fight the ground, but I'd say Vittori, be, too, uh, because yeah, Vittori, Vittori, Vittori doesn't too. doesn't like Vittori's not the best wrestler. But he's smart enough to try to wrestle when he knows he's out. He's like getting outstruck. Yep. But everybody else though in that in that top ten, I wouldn't mind seeing him. I mean, him, Paulo Costa, why not? Drunk Paulo <laughs> show up and he'll get. I don't me know if Paulo's ever going to show up again. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like I said, man, it was good fights. Uh, you know, good times. Uh, you know, good cards. Let's let's see what happens uh, this coming week in London. You know, you uh, a UK crowd. So I mean, it should it should, it should be a lot of energy. I mean, I'm just hoping we get to see the Izzy fight. Like, really, that's what we want to see, right? You know, whether it happens or not, because Izzy at this point is kind of far more advanced in MMA than than Pereira is. He's got a head start by a couple years. Like, eh, I don't know if it'll happen, but I hope it does. I really do, because Izzy's running out of people to fight, too. So, Mm -hmm. we'll see. Um, And shout-out to Damon Jackson. Look, I wrote him off after a few, like, bad losses. He's bounced back with a couple really good losses, submission wins. Like, Damon Jackson is, like, just, he's just like reinventing the like himself every five seconds. Like this dude just keeps on coming back and keeps on winning. So shout out to Damon Jackson. Yeah, a free agent, man. That was the last fight on his deal. So so let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I heard that he's um, probably going to resign another UFC deal. So we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he. I'm sure he, I'm sure he's not trying to go back to the PFL again. PFL or Bellator, but I mean, there's options. But at the same time, um, I've heard. Because I've interviewed Damon before. I know a lot of people around him. I've heard people around him. Like, he wanted they, – they were close to re-signing before this fight. Damon just wanted to see him win. Mm. So, he, he's pretty much got a deal on the table if he wants it uh, to kind of stay in that same category he is. If he wants more money to go to, like, somewhere like Bellator, it's possible. But I think right now he's probably better off playing it safe because he was almost about to retire a couple years ago. Yeah. And, and he, got a, he got a win. And, all right, cool. And then he got a few bad losses. And, like, Damon was giving him a last chance. He got a win. Then Dana's like, all right, cool. I'll give you another chance. Last fight on your contract. Let it fight out. He got another win. So now, now the ball's back in his court, which is good to see. Um, but that is the action from last weekend. We're going to go ahead and talk about some really cool stories coming up. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> Kevin Holland just fought a couple weeks ago, uh, got the big win uh, in his move down to welterweight. Uh, we know back in October – uh, he like stopped a car thief in his neighborhood. He held him to the yep. police, got there. Uh, Monday night, he was in another scary situation for most people, but not for Superman Kevin Holland, the superhero crime fighter. Uh, I will say this. So this is this is what we know about the story on Monday. Uh, Kevin Holland uh, and some other people took down a shooter in a Houston restaurant. There was about 50 or so people in the restaurant. The shooter fired once in the air. Now, we don't know if the shooter's intention was to shoot other people or to rob the place or, or whatever the situation is. It never got that far. There was a patron right next to the shooter that immediately grabbed him. Kevin Holland and one other person uh, also grabbed him. So three people got grabbed him. Kevin Holland was part of that crew that took down the shooter, held him until the police arrived. Uh, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Uh it seems to me that Kevin Holland is, you know, he does the right thing when it's time to come and he doesn't put himself ahead of other people. Like he'll put his head, his body on the line for other people. What do you think of the whole thing? Yeah, man. I just, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, just Kevin Holland's a good dude, man. He's doing good things, you know, story, you know, stories that uh, he can tell the grandkids one day, you know, uh, that's really it. I mean, you know, just, it's, it's good. It's good to have good, good uh samaritans out there yeah i mean obviously like i'm sure his agents and his managers and stuff were like what are you doing like get the hell out of there get out of the way stop putting yourself in danger 
because uh, there's a difference between real world danger and in the cage danger. You have a referee to help you out in the cage. You ain't got no referee. The cops got to get there first. They're, you know, they're they're even slower than Herb Dean. So, <laughs> sorry, Brandon, I had to go there. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but Kevin Holland like seems to be that dude. He seems to keep putting himself in these situations. Uh, I'm not sure why he was uh, down in Houston. Um, if he lives there or not, I know he's like moved around a few times. So he's Texas, uh, baby. He's a, he's a Texas guy. Yeah. Um, but. You know, somebody opens fire and immediately his first instinct is to stop the shooter. And you just got to give the guy, you know, a pat on the back and a round of applause because, you know, him and those other good Samaritans saved at least 50 people from anything that could have happened bad. Whether the guy's intention was to shoot anybody or rob the place, I don't know. But it never got that far because other people leaped into action and more people like that stops crazy stuff that we see on the news like mass shootings and stuff like that so just want to give a shout out to kevin holland uh share that story with you guys if you haven't heard it already uh i'll put the link in the description if you want to read more of it uh mma fighting had a really good uh talk with him uh about the situation afterwards um like i said one person grabbed him and then kevin holland i think was the second person to grab but they all sat there jumped in immediately even though the person had a gun in their hand that could have even accidentally gone off and gotten somebody. So dangerous situation. They put themselves in, in the line of uh, fire to, to save people. So thank you, Kevin Holland. Uh, and can't wait to see you get back in the cage and, and get stuck in the chokehold and do this again. Because right now, uh, that I think they just made a T-shirt for that. So they're going to make some money off that one. Uh, in other news, a story that never seems to kind of go away. It seems to have a new wrinkle every time we talk about it. Uh, Kayla Harrison obviously just re-signed. We've talked about this numerous times the last few weeks. She re-signed uh, with the PFL against her will, basically. <laughs> they had a right to match anything. They had a right to match any number. Um, I, we didn't know that when we started talking about her uh, circus of free agency last uh, or in the winter, like January and stuff like that, when she was running around everywhere in December. Uh, she showed up at a UFC event. She showed up at Bellator. And the thing that's different this time to me, Brandon, is that one, we know Cyborg has, I believe, one more fight on her deal. Um, so Cyborg can do whatever she wants after this next fight with Arlene Blenkow. I don't personally believe Cyborg is leaving Bellator. Her and Scott Coker have had a very long relationship. The only time she didn't work with Scott Coker is when Strike Force got bought by UFC and he wasn't doing anything for a number of years. Then she went to the UFC and she kind of got stuck in that contract until she got out and then went right back to Scott Coker. Uh, Scott has always done right by her. He's always taken care of her. And I wouldn't be surprised if Scott was open to a cross promotion fight. That said, Kayla now has to go through another season of PFL to get to that. She has to go through everybody they put in her path, whether it's Clarissa Shields or whoever. We haven't seen the brackets. We haven't seen the signings. We don't know yet who is going to be on the roster. They're still doing the PFL Challenger Series every week until we get closer to the season. And maybe you know a little bit more about the women that they're talking about putting in the division this, this year. Um, but the thing that caught my attention in this latest comment that Kayla made was she threw Amanda Nunez's name in there. And we always assumed her and Amanda were really good friends. But Amanda left AT&T recently, and they they every side went out of their way to say it was still a good relationship. She was just opening her own gym, pursuing her own dreams. She could still walk in and train at AT&T at any given time. But if that was true, Brandon, there is no way Kayla Harrison would have ever said the name Amanda Nunez and people she wants to fight to prove she's the greatest. What do you think about that new wrinkle with the whole Amanda Nunez situation? Uh, I think nothing of it, man. I mean, homegirls, just speaking facts, you know that Cyborg Nunez are two of the top people. Like I said, man, they you can still you you can still be training at the same gym, but you know who are who are who are the top people. You know, and like I said, she put it out there. Like I said, anyway, majority of the time was that those two really, like, they really weren't training together anyway. Like, they would, they would kind of show up at different times. Uh, you know, anyway, I think they, I think the only time was I think like Kayla did help Nunez in a in a fight camp. Uh, I can't, I, I can't, I can't remember, I can't remember for 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 which fight. Uh, it could have been maybe for the Megan Anderson fight. Um, yeah, I think it was. I think it was the May, the Anderson yeah. fight because I don't think she helped her with the Pena fight. Yeah, so uh, Amanda was training real weird for that fight. You know, so, you know, so 
So, like I said, I mean, she, and Amanda I mean, was battling COVID. I mean, like I said, I mean, to me, man, dude, this is Kayla just talking, man. She knows these fights aren't happening, so she just she just going out, just talking, just keeping her name in in, in the headlines, trying to keep her uh, star power. Yeah, you know, like I said, like like dude, like Nunez is in the UFC. She's not leaving. You're you're in the PFL. You know, Cyborg's in Bellator. You're gonna you're you're gonna try to put it on Cyborg now because 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 Cyborg's contract is about to be up, and you're gonna try to tell her to 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 leave Bellator to to to, to, to come to the PFL. What for? So she can fight you? Like man, get out of here. You had your chance. You you dilly dallied. You had you 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 let the PFL have matching rights in your contract. They matched it. Don't get upset. You're the one. You're, by the way, I believe her new contract is two years. So this yeah. isn't going to be like next year all over again. She has to wait a couple more years. Exactly now. because because they're matching what Bellator was going to give her. So Bellator was going to give her two years. Hey, that's what the PFL is doing. So hey, lady, you're getting paid. You're getting you're getting the money that 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 you deserve. Be happy. You're a prize fighter. You know you know what this reminds me of, and you might appreciate this as a wrestling fan. Back in the the eighties, right when the when you had WWF led by Hulk Hogan. And you had WCW with Ric Flair, or NWA at the time with Ric Flair. And you had AWA led by Rick Martel. And everybody would always talk, like, what would happen if Hulk Hogan fought uh, Ric Flair? Yep. And then every once in a while, you'd hear Rick Martel people be like, but what about Rick Martel? What if Rick Martel fought Hulk Hogan, or if he fought Ric Flair? Like, trying to put him on the same level as the big two, right? And yep. Kayla's like the Rick Martel in this situation. She's still great. She's still really talented. We know she's a really good fighter. Maybe she could beat Cyborg. I mean, Cyborg's up there in age. She's got a you know an advantage on her in that one. Maybe she could beat Amanda the way Amanda fought her last fight. But and and much like the Masvidal Covington situation, they know each other really well. So they probably know a few things about each other. It'd be a good fight. My thing is this: one, UFC's not making any cross promotion fights. It's like WWE when they opened the forbidden door for Mickey James, but real Mickey was already somebody was there. They were familiar with Mickey. That wasn't like a real forbidden door. It's not like AEW that opens up the forbidden door to New Japan and everything else. On the other side, I could see Bellator making a fight with Cyborg and Harrison. As long as Scott and Bellator are getting at least 50% of that money, I could see that happening. What I can't see is PFL allowing Kayla to do a tour like they did the last time when they were kind of like sidelined with COVID and the pandemic and they let her go to Invicta. They were going to let her do the Titan fight before that got canceled. Mm -hmm. Um, They did that to keep her active because they wanted to keep her happy. But now that they're back in full swing, now that their schedule is like they even added the Challenger series, they're adding more stuff to their play. PFL is trying to become a bigger player. And we know there's another MMA league that Ariel Hawani hinted at coming out in 2023. Yeah, the World that's also supposed League to be, or something like that. Yeah, that's, that's also that. supposed to be kind of similar to PFL uh, and the way they treat their fighters. So there's more options coming along the way. But right now we have the big three women's fighters, right? There's no doubt that it's Amanda, it's Cyborg, and it's Kayla. And you have people like Juliana Pena. You have other people with divisions, uh, <laughs> Valentina Shevchenko for one. Uh, that definitely throw their names in the hats for making noise. But those are the three people we want to see as fans fight, especially the casual fans. And it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen, at least anytime soon. Could we? I, I personally think we could see a Cyborg uh, Harrison fight come December or something like that if all the stars line up perfectly. But I highly doubt we'll ever see the Amanda fight, no matter how many. And I think that's why it's safe for Kayla to let it come out of her mouth, because she knows it's not going to happen. At least not in the next couple of years. So we'll see. And then Dan Lambert even said before uh, Nunez jumped ship that the fight would never happen. So, mm. but that was when people were in friendlier terms. Any final thoughts on that whole situation, King of the Ladies Fighters? I mean, my thing is like I I still don't get it. Like <clears throat> to me, it's like I understand Kayla Harrison, two time Olympic, you know, judoko, you know, gold medalist. But I watch her fights. I see she's running through people. But he's a yeah. hater. Yeah, you can call me a hater. <laughs> but I just want to know because no, because this because this is the thing. Because to me, what is which which is what again going back to wrestling, which is why which is what upsets me is like WWE does something, it's bad. AEW does it, it's great. To me, it's like Kayla Harrison's doing the same thing 
that you say the Sato same thing when I say the UFC does something great and Bellator does something great. You say UFC does bad and Bellator does no, great. No, no, no. Nice, nice try, guy. Nice <laughs> you try. You do the no. same thing. No, no, no. I we get it. We, we, we got no, 66 episodes of this before this. Who is it that Kayla Harrison has beat that says, yo, she can hang with Chris Cyborg or Amanda Nunes? No, I agree. Like, like, like that's has- all that, like that's all I'm gonna get because because everybody gets on Cyborg about like, oh, who has she fought, who has she beat, and blah blah blah. And it's like, well, yo, like she's putting in the work she's done this time. Well, Kayla Harrison is like what 11 and 0? You know, like I mean, like who like who is Kayla Harrison's best win? You know? I mean, that's kind of hard to say. Probably Taylor Godardo, who you know had been active for like or had been inactive for like 10 years, you know. She uh basically, you know was a big time amateur fighter, went inactive for a number of years and then came back. Um thing about Kayla is that, and we'll move on from this, you know, we thought Jenna Fabian would put up a challenge because of her uh, ability to strike and, and Kayla made short work of her. A veteran like Cindy Dandos, she made short work of her. Uh, the only time she's ever gone five rounds was with Larissa Pachenko, who's a veteran who's been around for a while. Um, she destroyed Courtney King and, and Evicta. Uh, Pachenko, she's fought twice, and both yep. times are going to a decision. Uh, that's the only person that's given her a challenge. Now, if Pachenko gives you a challenge, who is a legitimate fighter, she's been around for a while, she's tough, you got to think what Amanda Nunez or Cyborg would do, who's a step up from Pachenko by far. Exactly. And the thing that breaks me is, man, I get I, I hear people who are in the MMA media who are, who are picking who would pick Kayla Harrison over Cyborg. And I'm like, off of what? Like, what do we like? What fights are we looking at? Like, that's the thing is like, man, I'm just looking at to me, man, people are just being prisoners of the moment. You see her. You see her dominating some people. The question know, is, and, can she take Cyborg down? That's the question. Yeah. You know, but all, I mean, but also, too, it's like, man, like, I mean, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen it. But it's like to me, I'm still going to believe that Cyborg has a ground game. You know, like that's the thing. Like we haven't seen Kayla Harrison get any resistance on the ground. You know, like has she really been going up against you know another another wrestler, another uh you know a uh, a, a black belt jujitsu. You know, like saying like she had Cindy Danwa who who was another ju- ju- uh, 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 judo judo player, and yeah, she did she she didn't make quick work of her, but. But but hey man, that's my girl Battle Cat. But hey man, she 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 just she. she I'll go a step thing. further, Brandon. Like she backed up against Taylor Godardo. Godardo came out hard. Like Godardo yep. came out like and it surprised Kayla. She wasn't expecting it. She took a step back and took her to the second round before she finished her. Cyborg comes out hard. What you gonna do? Cyborg yep. ain't gonna come out backing up. She's gonna come out firing. Amanda Nunez is gonna match the wrestling. You know Amanda can take you down. So she does, she's not worried about the takedown. Um, could Kayla beat both of those? Actually, I think Kayla could. Would she? I don't know. I don't know if that's the same answer. I think Cyborg has an advantage on the feet. I think Amanda has a more well-rounded advantage. But we those are fights that are just going to be like dream matches that we talk about. Like both of us, I think I can speak for Brandon, barely. Like we don't think it's ever going to happen. Like am I wrong? Uh, I mean, I would be, I could, I, I'm more inclined to think that the cyborg has, if I could happen because Scott Coker is a man that does co that, that, that does co promotion. Yeah. Now the thing is though, now, yes, the PFL uh, president did send out our, our owner. He's not the president because Ray Sefo is the president, but, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, I mean, the That's CEO, a whole group of people, yeah. A whole group, yeah. but, but the CEO, he did send out Talking a, about Don Davis. Yeah. Don Davis. Davis. Yeah. He did. He, he, he did send out a tweet, but my man was that, but the thing is, though, was it just a tweet or did he actually call up Scott Coker? Did people actually call? Because good because if people are actually calling, different story. If you just send out a tweet, we really know what's popping. You're not really trying to make a a, a, a fight going on. You know, you're just say, trying to get the talk going. I've heard him say on Mike Tyson's hot boxing, he was open. When him and Ray Seffer were on Mike Tyson's show, I heard him say that he was open to cross-promotion stuff if it was right, if it fit. And Whenever you have to preface something by, like, if this happens or that happens, then yes, then you're probably not really looking for it because now you're looking for an excuse not to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not like I said. I think the cyborg has a better chance of happening. The Amanda one, I would never think would happen um, unless something crazy happened and Amanda left the UFC. Um, but crazier things have happened. It is the fighting world, so we'll see. Um, 
but I can't wait to pick Kayla every week, come up the season, and Brandon to get mad every week and hate on her. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say on her, man. Dude, the only coming fight, soon. The only fight that we want to see in the PFL if they make it right off the bat is her versus Julia Budd because that's the new name. That's somebody who has. You don't want to see her fight Abigail Montez. The who? <laughs> the, one that, the, the girl that beat Clarissa Shields. Please, man, come on. You know, hey, man, first you of all, me. Abigail is like 22, 23 years old. And she's she's got more experience. I told you when she fought Clarissa, she knows how to keep herself out of trouble. Yeah, and she did exactly what she had to do. She didn't look spectacular against Clarissa. She did exactly what she had to do and kept hey, herself man. out of and danger. Clarissa, she was still almost won that fight too. I'm just saying, man. Hey, and so did Ab- Abigail. Hey. Almost finished her too. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about Dude, that. When they stopped that fight, she was raining on on Clarissa Shields. That. But all right, all right, man. Hey, man, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens in the PFL. And then will Clarissa Shields be a better fighter and be in that season this year? Will and she be in the, the tournament this year? And she got she got, she got a boxing fight coming up. She not she even got a boxing fight, but she's always had in her contract she could do both. Yep. And she still got like another year or so on her PFL deal too. So um, she said she's coming back to MMA. Yeah, no, but I don't I don't I don't think she's gonna be in the tournament. I, I think I think I remember her saying something like she wasn't trying to do the tournament until like uh 20, 2023. Okay. Know? Well, we'll see. I mean, at this point, Kayla will still be there. Yep. <laughs> so they'll they'll they eventually will be on a collision course at some point unless something crazy happens. Yeah. All right. Uh speaking of wrestlers and speaking of grapplers, let's move on to the, the legend, the myth, the the spectacle of Triple C. Henry Cejudo, we know, Olympic champion, two-division UFC champion. Retired on top mm-hmm. and at a relatively young age. I think he was like 31 when he retired, right? Or maybe even younger. Um, caught the UFC completely off guard by all accounts. They did not know it was coming. They had big plans for Henry Cejudo, and he just kind of quashed them all and said, all right, I accomplished everything. I'm done. He went off and enjoyed his life for a couple years. Now, we all know Henry Cejudo's never bit his tongue. We all know Henry Cejudo is more than vocal. Now you can even see him speaking of Mike Tyson. He's now like co-hosting Mike Tyson's Hot Boxing. He's doing the uh, com- or some commentary and in-ring interviews with Eagle FC. Um, he's sitting there uh, coaching people like Cyborg, uh, Davison Figueredo. Like he's heavy in the coaching game right now, teaching them wrestling and grappling. Which, by the way, <laughs> what happens if Kayla goes up against a, a cyborg that's been learning to wrestle with Henry Cejudo? <laughs> like that's a whole other thing to talk about when we get there, um, if we get there. Um, and Henry Cejudo has been relatively successful coaching as well. Um, but as we saw with the Volkanovski fight, uh, we saw with the Peter Yan and uh, Sterling situation. Uh, Suhudo keeps throwing his name in there to want to fight. He's been saying, Dana, I want to fight. I want to fight a champion. Uh, Dana, for his part, has tried to downplay it, uh, dismiss it. And even at one time, I think the only time I've ever heard him say anything concrete about it was you can't just jump from being retired back into a title fight. And then, of course, everybody screams the name George St. Pierre, right? Because that's exactly what he did with Bisping. Um, we'll talk a little bit more in depth, but what are your initial thoughts? Will we ever see Henry Cejudo back in the UFC cage? Oh, uh, let me know when his name is back in the, uh, USADA pool. And then that's when I'll believe he's coming back because when you're retired, you come out of, you come out of the, you, you come out of the USADA pool. So that's I mean, true. even Brock Lesnar put himself back in the USADA pool before. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So, so, so to me, if you're serious, you gotta, you gotta put yourself back in the USADA pool. You can't just, you can't just be chilling and be like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, put me in a title fight. It's like, no, you're not eligible because you're not in the USADA pool. Like say at least GSP, he's always been in it. He's always what been is it, in six it. months. Uh, I think, I think so. Yeah. You, yeah. You, 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 you have to be back in there at least, at least for six months. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what GSP was at least he never retired. He just always took a break. So he was always in the USADA pool, but Henry Cerruto, he's retired. He's out of the USADA pool. So he has to, so he, so he has to put himself back, back in it. Like so, 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 so to me, until until he's back in there, he won't, he won't be back in a uh, UFC uh, octagon anytime soon. Maybe you know more about this than I do. Is he like he's been retired now a couple of years? Uh, is the UFC still like own his rights? 
Uh, I want to like say, how long would he have to be retired before he could be a free agent? That I don't know. Like, I, I, I want to, I want to say, like, I don't know if they, they, they hold on to it until like, until like forever. You know, if you ever, if you ever did retire, because like same, because same thing like with like GSP. That's why, that's why he's never gone anywhere. Even, even, even though now he is retired, he's he like I think that the U the UFC still still so on his his fighting rights or whatever. Yeah, I know that's a big deal. Like, why would they were talking about maybe him and Khabib having a grappling match because he can't do a fight. He can only do like a grappling match outside the UFC. Um, but my thing is like Henry Su- look. Henry Cejudo came out not even like a week ago and said he would never jump back into USADA. He would do other drug testing. For some reason, he has a problem with USADA. Um, so that instantly is a red flag. You're right, 100%. Like, if you can't – that's who the UFC works with. That's like saying you want to get in there and not win a, wear a crypto or venom kit. You don't have a choice. That's part of your – like, the contract of the fight. Like, that's what you got to do. Um it does continue to boost Henry Cejudo's star power, right? Like, is that because he retired on top? Like, more power to him. He did his thing. He beat DJ. He went up, won the bantamweight, or yeah, the bantamweight. Like, he did his thing. But what he did, retired on top. A pissed off Dana White, pissed off Sean Shelby and all the management makers because they had these big plans to keep pushing him, and then he almost killed a couple different divisions, including the flyweights, because he just all of a sudden was gone. If it wasn't for the whole Brandon Moreno and Davidson Figueredo trilogy and now quadrology, whatever you want to call it, the flyweight division would have been dead. We've we've heard Shorty Torres talk about that on Unfiltered. Like they had plans to get rid of the division because of everybody leaving. Basically, there was no star power. Now it's kind of stacked up a little bit again, but who knows for how long? Because that's not a division Dana ever really wanted to do it in the first place. He did it for DJ. He created that division for Demetrius Johnson. So Henry Cejudo abandoned a lot of stuff they had plans for and really pissed him off. And we know Dana holds a grudge. He, he, he can say all he wants in the public. He doesn't hold a grudge. Everybody who's ever done business with Dana White knows he holds a grudge. Um, but in my opinion, I think we do see Henry Cejudo fight again. And I don't know if it'll be in the UFC. I, th- I think somehow he might be able to maneuver his way into Eagle FC we know Khabib and Dana still have a really great relationship. Maybe they would allow him to fight over an Eagle FC. Um, we've seen former UFC fighters like even Junior DeSantos now just signed with Eagle FC. You saw, we just saw Kevin Lee and Diego Sanchez fight in Eagle FC. So we know the relationship of former UFC fighters going to fight with Khabib. We know Khabib and Henry Cejudo are very tight. Um, he was actually the reason why he even got the Mike Tyson gig to begin with is because. He was on the episode with Khabib kind of helping mediate the situation, right? And he had actually just trained with Khabib like two days before that. They were doing like some cross-promotion training uh, with AKA. I think we will see him. I just don't think we'll see him in the UFC. If he comes back, do you think we see the Henry Cejudo of old? Do you think he's still a top-level fighter? I mean, only, I, I mean, dude, like only time he's been training him. with top level guys, he's training Figueredo right now. Yeah. I mean, but is he, but I, I mean, I guess my thing is like, man, I just, you just don't know until, until you see that person back in there, you know, you don't know, you know, you don't know what the time off uh, is, is doing for them. You know, it could, could help them, you know, stay healthy, stay young, you know, stay fresh, or, you know, it just could be man, his timing could be off when he, you know, when he uh, gets back in there, but you know, just, you just have to wait and see. All right, well, we all will have to wait and see. Uh, I think he's going to keep throwing his name in the hat every time there's a big fight coming up. Maybe Dana will crack once and give it to him. Maybe he won't. I guess we'll stay. Guys, see. run that USADA pool first. <laughs> right, uh, which I yeah, ask the biggest question. All right, let's make our picks and get out of here. Brandon made up a lot of uh, ground last week. He caught up to me in the wins column, passed me even, but he's still way behind in the losses column and win percentage. So your boy is still the lead dog because we're going by win percentage. Anyway. Uh, we'll talk about that let next week when I jump back ahead of him in the win column as well. But let's go ahead and make our picks. They're on the move. They're in London, UFC London. This card was up in the air. We didn't know what was going to happen with the whole Volkov situation, the Russians invasion of Ukraine. There were so many question marks, but it looks like the fight is going to happen. Uh, it looks like we're going to get it. Volkov versus Tom Aspinall. Who you got in that fight? And tell me why. I'm going with Tom Aspinall, man. Uh, you know, he's he is the future of the heavyweight division. Uh, this is something that we had talked about before. Um, 
like I said, Volkov been a fan of his ever since his Bellator days. Uh, but I just think this is just going to be a, a showcase fight for uh, Tom Aspinall. This is going to be uh, him letting the heavyweight division, uh, you know, know that he has arrived. I, I agree. I think Volkov hasn't looked that great his last couple fights. I think Aspinall is young, fiery, explosive. Uh, I think he has a lot of tools, including grappling, that Volkov doesn't tend to like when people get inside of his reach and his length because, you know, he's a big dude. He's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you can get out to you. So um, I think Aspinall is going to mix it up and get this win as well. I think it's going to be a three-round decision. I don't think it's going to be any kind of stoppage. I think he's going to kind of grind it out and do what he has to do. Yeah. Uh, over in the co-main event, we got Dan Hooker dropping back down to featherweight to face Arnold Allen. Who you got in this one? Wait, is that the co-main or, or or is the Patty Pimblett one the co-main? Nah, the co-main is uh, Allen versus Hooker. All right, then. Uh, I'm going with um, – I'm going to go with Dan Hooker, man. I know he, he, has, he hasn't looked great in you know, his last fight, but, of course, of course that was against uh, Makachev. You know, he's, drop, he's dropping back down to 145. Uh, I think he's going to have the reach still. You know, he's still going to be the tall guy. He's going to have the length. Uh, like I said, I just like his kickboxing, uh, you know, a style again against Arnold Allen. I, I think I think I think this could be a striker, uh, a striker versus grappler uh, type of fight. Because I think Arnold, I think Arnold Allen's going to try to take him down and maybe try to uh, get a submission uh, for the W. But I'm going to go with Dan Hooker. I'm going with Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen in this one. Uh, I don't like Arnold Allen. He drops out of a lot of fights. He ducks a lot of opponents that people have called him out. But when he steps in that cage, the dude's magic. He, he makes things happen. He's 17-1 and one for a reason. Uh, Dan Hooker wasn't very successful at featherweight his last time. I think he was like 4-3 and three or something like that. So uh, I'm taking Arnold Allen in that one. Uh, yeah, Patty Pimm is going to make some noise, but he's not the co-main event in this one. Um, and we can talk about that in a second if you want. But what's your fight pick of the night? Uh, you know me, man. Going, I'm going, going with the homegirl meatball, Molly. Uh, I think, hey, like I said, I think, I think, I think, it's just a party, man, for all for 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 all the UK fighters to kind of have a coming out party, except for Arnold Allen because he's going up against Dan Hooker. Uh, but other than that, man, if you're a UK fighter, this could be a this could be a a a, a showcase fight for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, Luana is super tough. Uh, she is very tough, but I think this fight is kind of meant for McCann to win. Uh, it's just not a good matchup for uh, Carolina. Um, my fight pick, I've gone back and forth a few times, but I'm really intrigued by this Jai Herbert uh, Ilya uh, Topuria fight. Um, yeah. We haven't seen Topuria fight really like tough competition, but he's 11 and 0 and has pretty much knocked out anybody he's fought. Um, there's already talk of him fighting Patty Pim, like him and Patty Pimley got into it at the hotel. Speaking of which, they did. Uh, they got into a little scrap. Um, they talk about if you know he gets through Herbert. Pimlet gets through Vargas. That's the next fight to make. I personally do think that uh, Ilya is going to beat Jai Herbert. Uh, so that's my pick for that one. I, I like Taporia a lot in that fight. Um, I've seen a couple fights of his on YouTube, and he just – he's vicious, man. Mm -hmm. the, the, the dude is vicious. He, he – no back down. He's going to go out and, and knock you out. And he's looking to put on a show, and Jai Herbert sometimes takes that step back. He tries to be more strategic in his fights. Very good, 11-3. and three. There's no knock against Jai Herbert. He could win this fight. He definitely has the experience advantage, but especially against better competition in the UFC. But I, th I think Ilya is another one of those those guys on the rise and another star. Um, also on this card is Patty Pimlet. I think, uh, I mean, personally, I think he'll take care of business against Rodrigo Vargas. It'll be a tough fight, but I think they're grooming him the same way they groomed Connor to try to be like another big shot, mm -hmm. another big uh, person in that Irish market. Uh, you got Gunnar Nelson back in action against Takashi uh, Sato. Um, so many great, uh, Kyle offers Craig is another fight. I almost picked, um, you got Elise Reed making her second appearance. You know, she was undefeated as uh, CFFC champ didn't really match up well in her first appearance. So this, she's getting a second shot against Corey McKenna. Um, a lot of good fights. Anything else kind of stand out on that card before we get out of here today? Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say with the, uh, Elise Reed fight, she's actually back in her natural weight class. Cause remember in that fight, she did she go went up a weight class. Yeah. She went up a weight class. So, I mean, she, she's down where she belongs. So, I mean, she should have a better performance. Uh, I mean, I uh, mean, I mean, it's Corey a good card. six and one too. She's a good fighter. Yeah. I'm saying, man, you know, it's, it's a good card guy is, you know, they got some good fights on it. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be uh, checking it out because I can't wait to see as I go three and oh, and you will probably go, um, Two and one because you I got will, one of the same picks because <laughs> you will get the co-main wrong, but but I think your fight pick is 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 going to get the W as well. 
And I will say this. I almost picked an upset, too, because I think Jack Shore, who's 15-0, and 0, going up against Tamura Valiev, I think Valiev's going to win that fight. Um, yeah. But, it, you know, Jack Shore is another dude they're propping up trying to get, like, a big run. Um, but Valiev is tough, man. He's sneaky. Yeah. He's got that's such a good grappling game. That could be that could be a mess for, for Jack Shore. So we'll see. A lot of fun stuff taking place. Uh, of course, head over to fightersfirst.shop. Get all the latest and greatest. Get the new mechanic shirt. It's dope. I designed it. I know it's dope. <laughs> but uh, we wanted to mix it up. Uh, all the fighters you'll see, they have their de- pro debut dates on there. So New York City, 2016. If you remember the unfiltered episode with Brandon, he talked about his debut at combat uh, at the Capital. Uh, Shedrick Goodrich, Atlantic City, 2010. Alex Soto in California, 2009 um, on an Indian reservation. I got all that data. All that's mm-hmm. on the shirts. The Art of MMA shirt you'll see has the 13 on there because that's when Art of MMA started, 2013. Uh, the Cage My IQ shirt that will be coming up later uh, will have 20, uh, 20 on there as well. Um, so, you know, going back to honor in our debuts, the British Bulldogs, not their debut per se, but the shirt we just released has 1984, and that's when they made their World Wrestling Federation debut, uh, along with the Hart Foundation and other people coming over from Stampede uh, when Vince bought a stake in that. Uh, so that's a long story. A lot of stuff we could talk about on different things. Brandon, any final words today, buddy? No, nah, guys, just uh, enjoy the glory this weekend. Wait, uh, yes, there is glory 80 as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be watching that. Um, who's but, taking the main event? Who's winning? Uh, I mean, I got, I got to go with Bowder. I think, I think Bowder's gonna take it, you know, as it's like a rematch, said, he, right? When he got knocked out, yeah, like I said, he was dominating. So I think, I, I think, I think he'll bounce back and get this W. Um, but you know, I was gonna say, people, man, just comment. Let me know. Let me know why why I'm wrong about Kayla Harrison. Please let me know. Even though I know I'm not, but just comment. I don't, think you're, I don't think you're wrong. I think I just think you're too negative about it. Just speaking facts, man. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see how all that plays out. Uh, we got to go, but uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let Brandon know that he's a hater. And uh, we'll talk about all that next week, along with uh, some UFC London action. Uh, For the mechanic, Brandon Catino, I'm Mike Ginn, and we're out.